Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. In this video, I got an email from Anonymous that sent me a thing like this. I think it was from their phone. And they sent me a couple links. One was for this article, Wild Weather Ahead, How to Prep, how to prep for 2024's uh, Climate Shifts. Yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting year. We'll, we'll read some of the details from that. And then um, uh, a, a X post from Reuters talking about the updated death toll from the Japan earthquake and tsunami. So we have some numbers that are starting to come in. And then I also wanted to look at some recent stories, one coming out of Saudi Arabia and then another one out of Kenya and uh, the surrounding nations of Kenya. So, there, oh my gosh, there's some crazy stuff going on. So let's we'll start with this. This is from CNET. Um, I'll go down to the parts that I highlighted. Okay, last year's heat was no anomaly. It was part of a long-term trend. The last 10 years have been the 10 warmest on record, according to NASA, with most of Earth's warming taking place over the last 40 years. And 40, that's an interesting number. So is 10. Some forecasters are anticipating yet another year of extreme heat ahead. Quote, if we look at the forecast for the next three months in the long range, it's suggesting that the trend that we're seeing in baseline warming could continue. And so 2024 could rival 2023 for being the hottest year on record, which is very scary, says Chloe uh, Brimcombe, a heat wave researcher at the University University of Graz. Okay, so <clears throat> this year, I know not everybody agrees and it's fine because a lot of this is tied up into the nonsense about human caused climate change. But I think that they're... I think that the world is heating. I do. Uh, I'm not so sure about the supposed cause of it, but <clears throat> we all know that it's a very political issue. But I think it is heating. And um, so this for 2023, we saw, uh, let's see, it was the hottest July and hottest November on record. And then on the 4th of July of all days, it was the hottest day on record globally when you take all the temperatures across all weather stations and you average them and you compare uh, days like that, the average, it was the hottest day. So it was a really hot year. And you may remember if you've been watching my channel uh, or maybe you knew this anyway, uh, there were a lot of record breaking wildfires in 2023. So this is my spreadsheet where I keep track of that. I keep track of uh, three different things, or no, four different things. Whether it was the largest wildfire, in which case I have it in this red color. Deadliest is black. Most destructive is like this gray color. And uh, no, those are, sorry, those are the three things. Okay, so for 2023, British Columbia had its largest wildfire. And then Canada, as uh, the entire nation... And its entire wildfire season for 2023 had its biggest and worst wildfire season, which uh, I just checked before this. I, it seems that it's still at this number when I last updated it in November, uh, 40, 45.4 million acres. And that's really big. And it actually surpasses the 2021 Russian wildfire season, which uh, for Russia, that was its worst wildfire season, which was at 44.8. So Canada's was even bigger than Russia's in 2021. And out of all the all the different wildfires that I have tracked so far, uh, it's the biggest one but by far, by, by acreage <coughs> that happened last year. And there were a lot of incredible stories uh, from last year. You had Yellowknife uh, in um, Northwest Territories. It's the capital city, 20,000 people. The entire city was evacuated because they were worried about a fire that was approaching. Uh, there was uh, Kelowna. Is that what it's called? Kelowna in British Columbia? I already forgot. Kelowna. Yeah, Kelowna, British Columbia. There were some pretty apocalyptic scenes coming from there that we covered earlier this year. It was a crazy year for fires. And uh, not to mention in Hawaii, we had Lahaina, Hawaii that was destroyed by wildfire, which is very odd uh, for Hawaii. You don't typically think of Hawaii when you think of wildfires, but it happened. People had to literally jump into the ocean to save their lives because it was, uh, because it moved so quickly. 
And I feel like it's a companion event to the Paradise California fire back in 2018. And then Greece saw its largest wildfire. And uh, because Greece is part of the European European Union, and since no other nations in the European Union have seen as large of a wildfire as this one, it was also the largest wildfire in European Union history. And then the state of Louisiana saw its largest wildfire <coughs> in state history. And then Nova Scotia, its largest single wildfire, as well as its largest or its worst wildfire season for the province. So, and that's quite a bit compared to other years. 2023 kind of like takes the cake. Uh, There were some other big years like 2020 as well as 2018. But, and it's interesting because those are like the three highlighted years that we've been looking at. President Nelson's first year as president of the church, 2020 and everything that happened then. It was a bad wildfire season, especially for Colorado and just the Western United States. And then 2023, when uh, the war in Israel started, which could be uh, leading up to the final war, I don't know. So anyway, as we're reading this article and we're talking about uh, a warmer Uh, 2024 or something that could rival 2023. Are we going to have another year like we had in 2023? And uh, right here it says the forecast for the next three months. Well, if you go to uh, the Wikipedia page for the 2023 Canadian wildfires, it says beginning in March 2023 and with increased intensity starting in June. That's when their wildfire season started was in March. I don't know what it is for the U.S. I'm sure it's probably about the same. And then, you know, there's the whole rest of the year and we'll see how that goes. But and then uh, I just wanted to read this part too. the 2023 wildfire season for Canada has seen the most area burned in Canada's recorded history, surpassing the 1989, 1995 and 2014 fire seasons, as well as in recorded North American history surpassing the 2020 Western U.S. wildfire season. So it was really significant. It was significant. And this is what caused uh, so many uh, areas in the United States to have their skies darkened because of the Canadian wildfire smoke. And uh, we're actually going to talk about that in just a minute. Okay, continuing. Some of the extreme weather we experienced in the latter half of last year Sorry, some of the extreme weather we experienced in the latter half of last year and will continue to experience in the first half of this year is a result of El Nino, a cycle, a cyclical climate event that sees unusually warm ocean temperatures that has a knock on effect of warmer temperatures and increased rainfall across the southern part of the U.S. For instance, temperatures in Death Valley, California peaked at 128 degrees Fahrenheit in July, and I did a video about that, while forecasters predict a much colder, wetter winter for southern states this winter. Okay, so they're saying um, what we see, what we saw the latter half of last year uh, will probably continue for the first half of this year. So let's go to my um, my uh, Google Earth and everything that I have saved on here, and I'll turn on all the months from June until now. And we'll take a look at it. And uh, it was pretty, it has been pretty wild. All these blue place markers uh, are sites where there, there's there been just incredible flooding, uh, typically flash flooding with scenes of like raging rivers uh, in the streets of cities, like cities turning into raging rivers, people and cars and dumpsters and everything being swept away uh there's some been some really powerful storms there was storm daniel in the mediterranean which i'm still waiting to see the finalized death toll from uh libya but it was it has the potential to be up to 18 to 20,000 people that died from that flash flood um but it was essentially all over uh mostly europe <coughs> europe um north africa There has been some in the Middle East, uh, India, and then China as well. China saw some some record-breaking rainfall, specifically in Hong Kong. And you can't really see it because there's some other place marks here. There we go. Beijing. Two major cities 
that saw the most rainfall in recorded history, which goes back 140 years. And then here in the southeast, um, in Southeast Asia, uh, there were a bunch of places here that, that got hit by this crazy flooding. Surprisingly, uh, in the time that I've been tracking this, nothing really <clears throat> in um, Australia, although I may have, or, or New Zealand, I, I may have missed some things. But um, And then we've had some here in the United States. The ones that I've tracked have primarily been in the southeast and the northeast of the country. And then this is what I was talking about. Uh, why is that not turned on? There we go. Uh, when talking about the Canadian wildfire smoke, uh, this border right here, this like white border in all these uh, grayish white orbs right here, these are capital cities like of states and provinces that were affected by the Canadian wildfire smoke. And you can see the Canadian wildfire smoke affected a very, very large area. So large that it actually carried across the Atlantic uh, into Lisbon, Portugal, and Madrid, Spain. Okay, so, and then uh, we've had some crazy hurricanes along the west coast of Mexico. Uh, there's been crazy flooding in uh, Dominican Republic, Haiti, and Jamaica. And then South America has also seen a bunch of, uh, and I'm talking about crazy flooding, just like apocalyptic flooding and then and then africa as well and we're actually gonna be talking about kenya in just a minute here so this is the first half or the sorry the second half of 2023 and they're saying that this is essentially they're predicting that this is going to continue for the next <clears throat> six months so and then look at poor britain and ireland they have been hammered, especially over the last like several months. There, there's actually been some more flooding recently. Nothing that I'm going to put here because it's not really the same type of flooding, like the big flash flooding. But they've been hit by another storm. I think it's called Storm Hank, which has caused, you know, some flooding, but nothing like we've seen before. But they're just getting pounded like crazy with storms. So is France and so is uh, uh, Spain. Okay, so let's go back here. Um, NOAA's seasonal forecast predicts El Nino will result in warmer temperatures in northern parts of the U.S., stretching into February of this year, with some government weather forecasters estimating its effect may be felt through June. Uh, and I think that was it for this article. So now let's move on to Japan. So Anonymous sent me a link for this X post, which takes you to this uh, Reuters Science News. I went to the article. Um, Japan earthquake death toll exceeds 100, with hundreds still missing. So that's concerning. Um, at first, <clears throat> I wish I had remembered this when I was updating this number, but here's my earthquake tracker. And uh, I got this number, 126, from the Wikipedia article because for my, earth, for my earthquake tracker, I just basically copy the information from Wikipedia. And so... There's a little discrepancy between Wikipedia and this Reuters article because uh, I think the Reuters, Reuters article says 110, but Wikipedia has 126 uh, that have died. But um, it's starting off the year um, not good. I mean, <clears throat> compare this 126 to all of 2020 when it comes to earthquake deaths. In 2020, there were 180 earthquake deaths. So already, uh, we're almost like caught up to 2020, just on the first day of the year. And last year started with a really big earthquake in Turkey, and it's that one that uh, split the Mount of Olives in two in, in Turkey, not in Israel, but in Turkey. There was a Mount of Olives that was split in two. That earthquake killed 59,259. So this isn't on that level, but it's not starting the year off very well. Um, up here, I have the updates. Okay. So these are, these are new, uh, deaths and then new earthquakes. So 18 new 5.0, 61 new 4.0 to 4.9. And then here's the, the new deaths that I have recorded. So before, um, I only had two. So that, that was the last time that when I did that video at that time, there was only two that they had noticed that died. But now doing this update today, on January 6th, now it's 120, what I have here based on Wikipedia, 126 
with hundreds more still missing. So it sounds like we're probably going to pass up 2020 and 2019 just from that very first earthquake this year. If you look at the graph that I have here, um, you can see that things have been pretty deadly with earthquakes since uh, 2004. And this is that year that uh, President Oaks gave that really interesting second coming talk where he talked about all the signs of the times. And then later that year, there was this incredibly deadly earthquake in Indonesia, uh, which was associated with a tsunami that killed over 200,000 people. So ever since President, President no Oaks gave that talk, there's been some really deadly years um, when it comes to earthquakes. And last year was pretty deadly, and this year is not starting off very well. So that's interesting. Let's go to the article. Let's just read some of the details really quick. Wajima, Japan. The confirmed death toll from New Year, the New Year's Day earthquake in Japan reached 110 on Saturday as a search for survivors in the rubble of collapsed buildings entered a sixth day. The magnitude 7.6 quake struck the west coast, destroying infrastructure and snapping power lines to 22,000 homes in the uh, Hokuriku region. Rain hampered efforts to sift the rubble for survivors as more than 30,000 evacuees awaited aid. Uh, the number of confirmed dead was 110 by 4 p.m. Uh, in the, on Saturday, up from 94 the previous day, the Ishikawa government website showed. More than 200 people are still missing after the deadliest quake in nearly eight years. Mudslides, boulders, and road cracks left dozens of remote communities in Ishikawa prefecture isolated. In Wajima's Fukamimachi district, helicopters from the self-defense forces airlifted at least 14 residents to safety, according to a Reuters witness. And then here's like just one picture of <laughs> what happened to the roads there. Um, there's all sorts of just crazy things that you can see that happened there. <clears throat> but anyway, and there was one other thing. Um, I'm not an expert when it comes to earthquakes. I'm not one of these YouTube channels that really, really closely follows earthquakes. But there's others that do. And as of right now, this is not official science, although I think they've noticed the correlation. But these uh, different earthquake channels like on YouTube talk about the fact that they've noticed a, cor a correlation between solar flares and earthquakes. And it just so happens that we had the strongest solar flare since the 10th of September, 2017, right here. That happened on New Year's Eve of all days, uh, which came just a, just 17 days after uh, an, another powerful flare. At that time, that was the strongest solar flare since September, 2017. It was a X 2.8, but then a stronger one happened on New Year's Eve, an X 5. So New Year's Eve, an X5 solar flare, and then the very next day, there was this earthquake and tsunami. And as of right now, somewhere over 100 people that have been killed. So um, I'm starting to think that there might be something to that. I guess I'll have to observe it more myself. <clears throat> I trust them. I I'm sure that they're probably right. But it seems like we're seeing that right here, right now. Okay, so let's move on from that. Let's talk about Saudi Arabia because there's some uh, flash flooding going on there. This is from The Guardian. Weather, and I have video. There's always like video coming out of Saudi Arabia flooding, and th there's almost none of the time that I can ever uh, verify it through you know media sources. It's, uh, I don't understand where those videos come from, but this time I can with this instance. So weather tracker, Saudi Arabia hit by floods as temperature records broken in Canada. We're just going to talk about Saudi Arabia. Serious flooding has hit has hit parts of Saudi Arabia after a red rainfall warning was issued at the end of last week by the National Center for Meteorology. The areas most seriously affected were in the north, especially the provinces of Hale or Hail, I don't know, in Al Qasim, in the far north, far north of Ash Sharkia. And so, let me show you where that's at. Let's go to the Saudi Arabia. And it's essentially, it's this part of the country right here within this blue boundary. 
So this is the area affected uh, that we're talking about right now. High rainfall totals, hailstorms, and lightning were expected to come with heavy showers that moved in from the west. Typically, these parts of Saudi Arabia receive about 10 to 15 millimeters. Okay, 10 to 15 of rainfall in December. Uh, with this falling across three to six days of the month. However, <clears throat> some meteorological models were suggesting rainfall totals of 20 to 50 millimeters in places by the time the warning ended during the early hours of Saturday night. And th this is what we've been seeing with all these different areas. That's why you have the flash flooding. You have uh, a lot of the times unprecedented amounts of rainfall. It's not always record-breaking, but it's usually outside the norm and that's what what's causing all these events to take place and this is no different that's why we're talking about this story so far there have been reports of flooding in large quantities of hail and you're about to see that in some of these videos it's kind of crazy covering the streets in the city of uh boreda Bur al while exact measurements have been difficult to obtain there's been video footage of cars either driving through floodwaters or becoming stranded in large quantities of hail once the flood water receded. And that that's new. I haven't seen that before. So let's look at some of these videos. Let me zoom in. This is from Eric High, uh, the user Eric High. Heavy flooding in Ber Bereda, al Qasim region, Saudi Arabia, the 29th of December, 2023. So here you see, you know, there's some flooding. It's not the worst that we've seen, but just wait. Okay, in that same city, here's this. More footage of the flooding. <coughs> sorry. More footage of the flooding in Bereda, al Qasim region, Saudi Arabia. And I don't know. I mean, you can see what looks like the hail right there. I don't know if that's what this is. I don't know if this is like hail mixed with mud or what we're looking at, but... Okay, so there's, you know, some crazy flooding there. But you will see the hail for sure in just a minute. This looks disgusting. <laughs> this just looks nasty. I'm sure it's just, I don't know, dirt and mud. I'll bet there's some hail in that, though. It seems like this, like, white stuff. I think that's, I think that's hail. Okay, let's move on to the next video. Okay, so here, here, the same place, Ber uh, Bereda. Clearing massive amounts of hail... Uh, off the streets earlier today. And then cars uh, coming in right in behind that bulldozer. That is a lot of hail. I mean, not snow, hail. This is hail. I, I don't know that I've ever seen anywhere that has had that much hail to where you need bulldozers to, you know, uh, clear away. I'm sure it's probably happened before, but do you know of any other time when there's been so much hail that you've needed a bulldozer to move it? If you know of any other time, let me know in the comments below. I've never seen this before. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Oh my gosh, you have a bunch of like fresh produce there from these um, vendors or farmers. Conditions due to hail and flooding today at a vegetable market in Bereda, al Qasim region, Saudi Arabia. And that is really sad. All their stuff just being swept away. My gosh. And, and it looks like that's probably hail that's floating right there along with the produce. And so that's why I think like this has a similar appearance to this over here, kind of. You see these little like granule type things? I'm pretty sure that's hail. That's my best guess. Okay, let's move on to the next one. It looks like the same thing here. This is from uh, Dan Matungi. Extreme flooding continues in Saudi Arabia, completely submerging the streets. Yeah, that's definitely hail floating on the surface there. Oh my gosh. Okay, next one. Flooding in Hafar al-Batin. So this is a different location. And uh, no hail there, but you see a bunch of flooding. And then this one uh, from Andre, user Andre. Thunderstorm and flooding near As-Safra. As -Safra. 
Watch now the International Online Forum, Global Crisis. The, okay, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I, I really like this photo. I don't like, you know, that there's like this flooding going on. It, you don't see any like destruction or damage taking place right here necessarily. But that is a really cool video. And it looks like there's some hail in there too, in that water. Unless it's some other thing, unless it's just like some kind of like foam or something like that. But I really like this video. That's cool. Okay, so this is the area affected. A pretty, you know, a sizable area in Saudi Arabia. Let me just turn on the borders so you can see in case you're not too familiar with where Saudi Arabia is. It's just right here. Do -do -do -do. Okay, um, but Mecca is over here. Uh, there was some flooding in Mecca that we noted in uh, on the 22nd of August. Uh, extreme weather, winds, fierce rains, okay, flooding in Mecca. Medina is right here, okay? Anyway, so this area. And uh, it's actually, I don't know, I didn't see anything about Riyadh, the capital city of Saudi Arabia, but it seems like it's somewhat in the, it, it's at least in this like estimated area of where all this stuff occurred or the area affected. Okay, let's move on. Now, we're doing an update on what's been going on in Africa. Okay, let's move on down to this part of East Africa. So this has been something that's been ongoing for a while, at least since the 3rd of November. Uh, you have several countries, Tanzania. Well, I don't know if this is related to it. Let me look at the dates here. No, that's like in April, May, so probably not. But Tanzania, Kenya, and Somalia, and then like a small part of uh, Ethiopia have been affected by uh, heavy rains and flooding. And this is my current, uh, my current place marks for that. Okay, but there's, there's an update because it, it's still ongoing. And now the, um, uh, the death toll has gone way up since the last time that we talked about this. Okay. <clears throat> Mondera, Kenya. Kenya's military hastened efforts Thursday to evacuate hundreds of people trapped by raging floods that have hit many parts of the East African country. Floods have killed at least 170. Now, this is just from Kenya. I'm going to show you the update uh, or the, the total between all those countries. Floods have killed at least 170 in Kenya and displaced more than 600,000 since the onset of heavy rains in November, according to the Red Cross, which is helping to coordinate the rescue efforts. So over a half a million people uh, left homeless. Here's a picture of a flooded area. And that's all I have from this article. And then this one has to do more with the other countries um, or talks more about the other countries. This is from Euro News. Floods have washed away entire villages. Kenya's rains made twice as intense by climate change. Okay. Disease and lost livelihoods. Tens of thousands of people in northern Kenya have lost livestock, farmland, and homes due to the floods described by aid, aid groups as the worst in 100 years. Uh, again, that's kind of interesting because we were just talking about Hong Kong and Beijing and how they've had the most rainfall they've ever seen in 140 years. So the rains have also caused an increase in cholera and other waterborne diseases in some parts. Quote, what we are witnessing in Kenya, Somalia, and Ethiopia is yet another devastating blow to an already fragile humanitarian situation, said Milaku Yirga, regional director for Africa at the humanitarian organization Mercy Corps. Continuing with the quote, Floods have washed away entire villages. That's pretty apocalyptic right there. You know, I feel like, I mean, that's what you would expect in the last days. Uh, wiping out homes, farmlands, and the critical infrastructure necessary to support a swift recovery and movement of people, goods, and much needed humanitarian aid, end quote. Kenya's meteorological department has warned that heavy rains will continue into the new year. It is urging people living in lowlands in flood-prone areas to evacuate. 
Now, here's where we get the numbers for those other countries. Kenya is not the only country to be affected. In neighboring Somalia, the death toll stood at 110 on Monday, with more than a million displaced. And in Ethiopia, the rains had caused the deaths of 57 people and displacement of more than 600,000, which that's the same as Kenya, uh, over half a million, as of the 27th of November. And in Tanzania, heavy flooding and landslides in the northern part of the country killed at least 68 people and injured uh, 100 last weekend. So, yeah, that's that. That's a pretty big update. By the way, this this article is dated, or it was updated on the 18th of December. So, I'm sure there's been more that's happened since then. But these are just the two articles I was able to easily find. Um. Oh yeah, I wanted to go to to this. So, as you know, if you watched my recent video where we covered, um, well, actually, I can't remember which one it was, but in a recent video, I talked about the fact that I want to start up my spreadsheet again, just tracking all these disasters on one like master spreadsheet called Signs Disasters, because I wanted to uh, just take my own uh, tally of. Um, you know, of uh, deaths per year. So, so far for 2023, between all the disasters that I've been tracking, it's at 71,317 that have died. And then for 2024, we're already at 110 and surely more as more news comes out. I wanted to keep track of capital cities in column uh, D right here, because as far as signs go, if a capital city or a very prominent city gets hit, that sends more of a message and a warning, um, you know, through whatever the natural disaster is. And so, okay, so here we go. Let's go back to November 3rd. That's the first date that I have when this started. So we have Kenya, Somalia, Ethiopia, Tanz- uh, Tanzania, I have, and then some of the cities that I've come across. Um, so when you total it all up, it's at 405 deaths so far. And it sounds like it probably it probably will continue to go up. <clears throat> so it was a pretty deadly event. When you compare that to other events, you know, you had the hurricane in Acapulco. Of course, I, I probably need to go back and update that. But last I heard, it was at 46. Here's this earthquake in Afghanistan. Um, that was 2,000. 4,000. That, that's the only confirmed number so far for the Libya flash flooding as a result of Storm Daniel. Um, the 8th of September, the day before President Nelson's birthday, uh, about 3,000 in Morocco. But you can see these other disasters. I mean, Lahaina is at 115. These other ones are like relatively small. Uh, There was some flooding in Rwanda that killed 574 in May of 2023. So anyway, I'm just trying to show you that, relatively speaking, this has been a pretty deadly event. The deadliest events have been earthquakes for 2023, and then after that, uh, flooding. And this one's at 405 between all those countries. All right, and then let's just look at some... Uh, videos really quick. Disaster news. Flood on the street due to heavy rains in Nagara of Nairobi, Kenya. And that's new because last time I checked on this story, Nairobi had not seen any flooding, but now it is, and that's a capital city. So now I've added that to my spreadsheet. Disaster tracker. Flooding yesterday in Langata Road, Nairobi. Okay, <clears throat> move on. Conditions yesterday in Kenyatta Avenue, Nairobi. So their capital city uh, is experiencing this this flooding. Flooding due to heavy rain yesterday in Nairobi. And it seems like it's like right there in their like downtown, you know, the like the business district of the city. Uh, More footage of the flooding yesterday in Nairobi. And here you see some pretty strong currents and again, people driving in this. And I just, 
I guess if you have to get to work, you have to get to work. I don't know. It looks like maybe it's just this portion of road. Maybe they're like, well, it's not that far. We'll we'll get through this. We'll just go from there to there. Still, I, I wouldn't do it. Because, like, what if suddenly the water surges? You know, what if there's just, like, a surge? Like, it, it gets even even stronger and deeper then you're going to be literally up a creek or up a creek sorry <laughs> and then rains in nairobi so in this set of videos we haven't seen any like you know floating cars or anything like that nobody being swept away but you can see that there's there is flash flooding that's taking place in the capital city all right so <clears throat> that's going to be it for this one um if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also make sure to share it and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.